J.T. Crowley is talking books. On this show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. Hello, I'm J.T. Crowley, and I warmly welcome back for the third time Linda Hockey to talk about her children's books that are built around a pack of hunting dogs that are built around the stories, the experiences that she's had with these hunting dogs. They are German short hair pointers and all their associate friends, animals that they come across on their daily adventures at Lazy Dogs Hacienda. So these are children's books, everybody, all about the hunting dogs and their friends and the adventures that these hunting dogs have. There are nine books in her collection of children's books, but for the purpose of this interview, we're going to concentrate on five of the books, because if we did all nine, we'd still be here tomorrow. But the other four books will be in the written introduction for you to go and have a look at. So we do put them there, everybody. But as I said, for the purpose of this podcast, we're going to do just the five books. And they are Hickory Dot's Tales, The Pack First Generation, the Remarkable Story of Willie the Crow, A Hickory Dock's Tale. Chatty, the Hen Pheasant, Travels with the Pack. Blake, Jake's Unusual Day, Travels with the Pack. And finally, the second edition of Desert Friends, Travels with the Pack. Linda is from New Mexico. She's been married to Mike, a retired surgical pathologist, for more years than she cares to recall. <laughs> she has two children, three grandchildren, and I mustn't forget the one great-grandchild. Absolutely. And, of course, she's got a whole host, a whole menagerie of uh, dogs, pets, etc. That's just her lifestyle, and that's where the stories really do come from. So, Linda, it's great to catch up with you again. Would you like to come and join me on the show? Yes, definitely. And I really appreciate all that you do, John. Oh, it's a a huge privilege to have you back on the show for the third time and and talk about more of your books. Now, Linda, before we open up the books, would you care to tell everyone a little about yourself, where you come from in New Mexico, that mountain home that you live in? and the background as to how the stories and books came to be. I'd be glad to, John. Uh, We live on top of a mesa, 10,000 feet up, outside of Angel Fire, New Mexico. We call it Hidden Lake. Uh, I started a long time ago. Actually, I wrote my first book in 2005. I'm a past teacher. Uh, of regular schools, also Sunday schools, and I'm also a docent uh, for 20-some years with two important museums in Oklahoma. And while we were there, we did a lot of work with children, which enabled me to see not just a written book, but the visual book with the paintings, et cetera. And that's sort of how I got started with my own books. And, and my dogs are, I guess what, what I would say, John, the most important thing to me for my books, for my children's books, is for the children to enjoy them, to learn a little bit of life lessons, but also it's for the memory of, of over 30 hunting dogs that we have had, and my husband, the hunter, that we call the great one in the stories. And if you're going to ask me, everybody, do I have a favourite character, a favourite dog? I do. Zeke. He was the, um, he had a different coat to all the others. And he certainly thought that he was a bit above all the others. He was his own character. So, Linda, let's start with Hickory Dock's Tales, the pack first generation. Now, there are nine small chapters to this book, and here we get the story of the five original hunting dogs, with Doc being the old wise dog, and we have Zeke, here we go, his younger annoying brother, Patch's daughter, Russian Zoot. 
Now, I love the story in chapter three, you know, the story of the porcupine, um, Quills, Pete and Rush. So, Linda, why that story in that chapter? Where did that come from? It comes from most of the stories that I tell the children, because I'm a storyteller first, come from the experiences that my husband had hunting with the animals and all of the adventures that they had. I simply exaggerate the stories and make them into children's stories. He can tell me a sentence, uh, Porcupine Pete came about simply because when my husband goes hunting with uh, the dogs and he hunts, by the way, he only hunts birds, uh, but when he would go hunting with them, they might wander off. Rush was notorious for seeing another animal such as a porcupine and they have a scent that the animals seem to love. And Rush would run in and he would throw the porcupine up in the air and yet he would get all these needles in him. And then my husband would have to take them out with the needle nose uh, ply, plow, ply, uh, pl plowers. We got it, pliers. Huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. With we the needle it, pliers. pliers, okay. Uh, sorry about that, but that's where this story comes from. It teaches uh, for the children, not just the humor of it, but also the loyalty and the obedience of animals, which sometimes is non-existence, <laughs> you know, and yeah. my husband would have to go and get him. So most of these adventures um, are actually about those type of animals. And Porcupine Pete was one of the best, I must admit. I found it and funny. Was, yeah, well, it was. And, you know, I can't begin to tell you the number of times that Rush would get into them. It's like they don't learn. And yet he would come out with all these needles and Mike would have to sit down and pull them out one by one. And, with the pliers, you know, everyone. With the pliers. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of the word again. Pliers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I kept um, trying to think of it. But anyway, I uh, Rush was our adventurer dog. I mean, he was loves adventures and he would do those kind of things. Yes, he did. And I'm intrigued as to the storylines, you know, in the book as well. We, you know, we talk about hamburgers, fries, Caesar mm -hmm. salads, and temptations, and cabbage patch skunk. And I'm thinking, what are these dogs meddling and getting themselves into here? And you talk about upside down owl, um, all sorts of ventures. Spill the beans here, Linda. What are you, where are you taking the kids here with these doggy adventures? Well, we considered our dogs as, as our family. So they were inside dogs and outside dogs. And they happened to love Caesar salad. I cannot begin to tell you about Caesar salad and the hunting dogs. They loved it. And so um, I, I had a dinner party one night and good old uh, Doc was in the kitchen when we were in the living room and I had laid out the big salad for everybody there. And also the hamburgers were sitting there and I was getting ready to bring the, the company in. And Doc decided that he wanted them. So he got, he kind of, put his paws up on the table and he got into the hamburgers and he knocked over the bowl with Caesar salad, which brought my husband in. And th thus begins the adventure of my husband chasing Doc out in the pasture and finally getting him back in. And Doc had, Doc was the one we usually let sleep in a chair in the house, but we put him out with Zeke in the next kennel. And Zeke is the dog that you love. He's also one of, I love all my dogs, but Zeke was a, he was too smart to be a dog. He definitely was very smart. And so Doc had to spend the night with Zeke out in the kennel and that uh, Zeke never stopped talking to Doc and that drove Doc crazy. So that'll tell you just a little bit about that story. <laughs> it, and she even had a dog, everybody had a penchant for book covers. Mm. Now, 
The second book you wanted to talk about in this interview, Linda, is the remarkable story of Willie the Crow, a hickory dox tale. This is the story of the friendship between Patch, who's Doc's daughter, and Willie the Crow. Now, everybody, Willie the Crow didn't have the best eyesight in the world. And when you look at the story here, uh, Linda, you've got him crashing and bumping into all sorts of things like the shed. Now, the other dogs aren't too happy with Patrick's relationship with Willie. They're more concerned with their street cred amongst the neighbouring dogs, as they're supposed to be hunting dogs, not friendly dogs with Willie the Crow. But Doc, the old wise one, has got another plan here. He spots an opportunity here for Patch to get to learn all about birds. So what's the real story behind this, Linda? Tell us. Okay. Uh, we had a swimming pool in our backyard and uh, the do German short hair pointers, at least nowadays, don't seem to they're breeding. They don't seem to like a lot of water, to be honest. I think years and years ago they did. Uh, so my German short hair pointers would not get into the water. Uh, but uh, Patch and Willie, there was a crow, uh, a neighbor had had a crow that was very uh, used to the family, so to speak. So Patch and this crow would run around out in the backyard. Crows are very smart. And then one day Patch got into the pool. And so this story is simply about how the dogs come together in a team, team effort of saving Patch from drowning. And Willie is one of the ones that went to go find Newt, our Labrador retriever. But you've got to understand Labrador retrievers love water. But Newt <laughs> was one Labrador retriever that was afraid of the water. But Newt was able to get into the water because of Patch. Now, I'm exaggerating the story, but and, and get Patch out. So that's one of the, you know, the points of this story, so to speak. It's, it's the overriding theme, everybody. And as um, Linda's already preempted my next question. So. <laughs> okay, I'm yes, sorry. He was. Yeah, Patch did fall into the swimming pool and Willie the Crow was dispatched to go and get Newt. So as, as Linda says, it's all about teamwork and that's what the hunting pack is all about. Because when they go out on you know hunting, they work as a pack, they work as a team, just like you see any um, dogs or wolves or anything like that. They act as a pack, act as a team. Um, now, the third book you wanted to chat about, um, Linda, no pun intended here, everyone, was Chatty, the pheasant hen, travels with the pack. This is the adventure story of Chatty, the pheasant hen, and Lucky, a black Labrador retriever. Now, you set the scene on a bleak November's day and a snowy day on the plains of South Dakota. Lucky is out to impress the Great One, his owner. But Chatty, well, she's got her own story to tell here. And I'm not going to tell it you, everybody, because I'm going to ask Linda to tell it. OK. Uh, yes, my husband loved to hunt with the dogs um, all through the different seasons or when there were when the seasons were for that particular uh, species so to speak and so they were in South Dakota this this did almost happen not not quite the same way but uh, and Lucky basically Lucky's name was uh, Cimarock Lucky Nassau so we actually called him Nassau to be quite honest with you that's what what his name is is in the book and he loved to please uh, the great one, the hunter. And he came amongst a huge snow pile, very high, and he dug through the snow pile and there was Chatty, the pheasant hen. And she was sitting there burrowed down in the snow. 
and NASA grabbed her and they uh, hunting dogs to make a really, really good hunting dog. They have to have a soft mouth, which means they don't like crush down on the birds so that when they are called to bring them back or when the hunter has them bring them back, that, you know, they're still, they're not, they're not, they don't have a lot of, they don't have teeth marks. So Nassau was very gentle in trying to bring Chatty back. And this is the story of what happens to a hunting dog when they steer away from realizing what they're supposed to be hunting. The hen pheasants, that was not the type of this, that was not the season or the time or the week to be able to hunt the hens. And my husband was very good about obeying all of the rules with the animals. And so Nassau learned a very valuable lesson in chatting tried to convince Nassau to let her go. And it's an, I think it's a cute story. I hope the children would really, really like that story because Chatty, Chatty tries to talk Nassau out of taking her. Is oh, she's cute. To. She's smart. Yes. She knows she's not in the, um, the arena at the moment. And yes, she's very adorable, everybody. Yeah. Now, when I look at the books, Linda, the illustrations that Mike Minnick um, does for you. I mean, he's illustrated eight of your books, I believe. And so when I've looked at the illustrations through all the books, all the eight books that he's done, um, there's only one that he didn't do. Um, I begin to wonder, did you enjoy working with Mike to bring these illustrations, these wonderful, you know, vivid, bright, imaginative, you know, beautiful illustrations to life. Did you enjoy working with Mike? I love working with Mike. Uh, met him years ago. He's from Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we used to live in Catoosa. Now we don't, obviously, because we're up here at Angel Fire. But um, he he's fabulous. I will do a manuscript uh, and then I will send him the manuscript with various places where I want the illustrations or the page. You know, I'm not sure on the pages exactly until you get the book out out there to see an outline of it or draft of it. And then Mike goes through it, reads the manuscript, because I think that's most important for your illustrator to actually read every word. And he's excellent with that. And then we talk. And he and I are on the same mind frame. He's a fabulous uh, uh, illustrator, designer, uh, and he works with a lot of different places in Tulsa. Uh, he doesn't just do children's books, obviously. Um, he's very involved with hospitals, et cetera, for all, all of their marketing. And he's fabulous with that. And that's, he and I that way um, can bounce ideas off of each other because he has fabulous ideas too. And so I listen to him when we're talking about illustrations. He's he's that good. And I I will always use Mike. He's a fabulous illustrator. They are beautiful, everybody. You know, the kids are just going to love them. Um, do you have a favorite character? Do you have a favorite book out of all your collections, all your animals? Or are I they love... all equal to you? Yeah, I it's so hard to say that because I love all of my books because they're about my family, my animals, my husband. So I love every one of them. I think every time I do the last book, um, I always think, oh, this is really the one that I just know the kids are going to love because I love storytelling with the children. I think that's the most important thing a person can do. I think the children need happiness and and uh, they need to experience animals. Animals give us all of our life lessons and everything else. And I've said that before. But anyway, I I hate to tell you this. I don't want to say that I have a favorite book because I think all of my books are my favorites. I have a favorite cat and I've already said who it is. It's Zeke, everyone. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Zeke is... And if I could just say a little bit more about Zeke, Zeke, as, as I said, my husband always said Zeke was too smart to be a dog. He was also uh, 
he was the one when my husband had him and didn't have another hunting dog at that particular time. Zeke was the one that would go out and really hunt hard for my husband. But as soon as Doc came into the picture, Zeke decided he was management and, and Doc was staff. And so Zeke would not go past my husband. He would stay with him. And as soon as Doc, and Doc was a fabulous hunting dog, as soon as Doc would find the birds and then Zeke and point them, then Zeke would rush up and take over because he wanted the credit of the bird. If any other hunter, my husband was very good. He, he, I mean, he loves the animals and so he's very good with them. But, but, if, but if anybody were to reprimand Zeke or to tell him, you know, oh, this is bad, Zeke would then cower and he would go next to my husband and he would not move and he would sulk for the next hour behind my husband. That's how smart Zeke was. He was, if you could have seen him, I could tell you another story. I don't, I don't know if it, well, I, I think it's still appropriate. When we found, or when we got Zeke, he was with a trainer and the trainer was bragging to my husband about how wonderful this dog was. And my husband said to him, okay, is he, is he, is he house trained? You know, we, we, we like our dogs to be house trained because they're inside. Oh yeah, Zeke's house trained. Well, right behind him, Zeke was raising his leg, doing this business right behind the trainer. As soon as he said that, it's like Zeke knew. And he's, that's, he, he's that kind of a dog. <laughs> or he was. Good old yeah. Zeke. He thought he was a cut above all the others. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, your latest book, Linda, Blake Jake's Unusual Day, Travels with the Pack. What gave you the idea or the inspiration to create a story around a turkey, um, Blake Jake's, um, linked up with um, a Hereford bull, Homer, and one of your dogs, Rush. Now, Rush bit off a lot more than he could chew in this book, didn't he? Yes. He didn't come off the best. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> My husband hunted um, turkeys, and you really don't want to hunt dogs with turkeys because uh, turkeys can be very ferocious and they can really hurt the animals. So I exaggerated uh, the story a bit. But Rush and Zeke were both known to um, if they were around cattle. And my husband was in all sorts of fields. And uh, if they were around the cattle, if there was a very young calf, then Z uh, Rush would go try to pull it away with uh, by the by the neck. And this has actually happened. And then the other cattle would, would surround him and then he would be afraid and he would run away. So I combined Homer, at the bull, the Herford, Herford bull, with the turkey and also with Rush to make the story because Rush was very stubborn and Rush always had to learn the lesson the hard way. So that's what I did with that one. Because it's, you know... I love the uh, the bit in the book where you've got uh, Blake Jake wishing he hadn't snoozed in between classes on how to do emergency takeoffs. <laughs> and the that, overall concept that because, Rush had bitten off more than he could chew, yeah. It's fabulous. You that know. is absolutely, yeah. And that's, that's exactly, you know, the, my husband had many adventures with turkeys, et cetera. And uh, yes, so yes the animals did learn a lot if they were around them, although he didn't really like to hunt. Because Blake, Blake was actually bigger than Rush, wasn't he? Yes. When, and when Blake, Blake coughed up, he was one. bigger than Rush. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and Blake didn't want to be caught by Rush either. And Blake Jake was very smart, and he taught Rush a lot of lessons in that book. And good old Homer... Gave him a good ticking off as well with a good hoofing. Oh, yeah. Yes. Go and have a look at the yeah. book, everybody. <laughs> now, Linda, you chose to re-edit Desert Friends, Travels with the Pack. So this is the fifth book we're going to talk about, but it's the second edition, everybody. And it's got lots of awards. It's starting to build more awards. And quite frankly, Linda keeps emailing me every day. Oh, it's just got another award. 
Um, but one of the awards was the Best Book at Frida Film Festival, Orson Welles in Paris Awards 2023. And now she's got a Chicago Award 2023. And she keeps emailing me them with the uh, all these awards. I have to say to her, Linda, will you please stop sending the awards? I'm running out of space to do the introduction. <laughs> But the story, let's just refresh here, everybody, is about the friendship between Rodney, a brown and black speckled roadrunner, and his friend Quincy, a gambles quail, who are chatting away to each other, thinking about lunch. Now, the story is set in the Arizona desert, Sonora, around there. And so it's, you know, it's hot. And... It also includes the story of two of the hunting dogs, Gator and Tripod. Now, Tripod was called Tripod because he had three legs. Naturally, Tripod. So they're the two German short-head pointers. So it's the story of the two dogs, Rodney the Roadrunner and Quincy the Gamble's Quail. Now, Quincy has all of a sudden realised, oh, it's the quail hunting season. I might be lunch. I think I need to do something here. <laughs> now, a storm blows up from nowhere. Now, I'm not going to tell you the story here because I'm going to get Linda to tell you the story. Tell us the story, Linda, of this book. Okay, I'll tell you parts of it. Um, yeah, uh, my husband did a lot of hunting in the Sonoran Desert for quail. And the dogs were with him. But in this particular instance, in, well, in this particular case, I should say, um, my start out that story with animals come in all sizes, shapes, and colors. And they were friends. I wanted to teach the children the humorous story of animals that were not the same species and yet could all could still be friends and learn about each other, learn their differences and what the, how they were like. And in this story, Quincy and Rodney, oh, they were just having a blast. Uh, but they learned a couple of things that were different about them. And the fact that roadrunners basically are loners, whereas the quail gather together in coveys. That's one example. Uh, the storm on the tripod and gator coming into the story, they were out hunting. And Quincy got very upset, but she knew that Gator and Tripod would would not let the hunter get near them, uh, or at least would tell her before the hunter got there. In the meantime, a large storm came, and, and all of those arroyas out there in the Sonoran Desert can fill up immediately with water. I mean, just unbelievable. And the dogs were trying, and the dogs and the birds were trying to get out. They met each other. I'll, I'm not going to go into a lot of that, but anyway. And so they all got out except for Tripod. Tripod couldn't get out. So uh, Quincy and Rodney and Gator went all along the bank trying to get Tripod out. And in the end, of course, they were able to get him out um, to make a long story short. And then the hunter comes up and the hunter learns a little bit about Quincy and uh, also Rodney. So that's, and then it's a friendship story, but it's humorous. It is, it's friendship and it, and it's uh, quite a funny yeah. book as well. There are, the, the story is quite funny, but it's very, very endearing. Um, yeah. What's the difference between the first edition and the second edition? And do that's... you, sorry? No, go ahead. And so what's the difference between the first and the second edition? You know, what's what's extra? And do you think all the awards that you're getting for your books are important to you? I think the difference, I'll start with the first part. The difference between the two stories is on the second edition, I have added activities in the back for teachers for parents and for librarians. And this particular story is with Story Monsters Inc. I mean, it, it, I mean, the publisher is Story Monsters Press and they are fabulous. And so, so is anybody else I've been with too. 
but they actually, their digital magazine, which is produced in Massachusetts, is for teachers, librarians, and parents. And then they have a chapter also in Arizona, and it's the Story Monsters Press. And when I went with Linda Radke with Story Monsters Press, she was delightful. And she's the one that encouraged me to put things for teachers. I am a, I'm a teacher first, and I love teachers. Um, and I really feel like it's important to teach the children, but not make it boring. It has to be fun. And that's what I hope my stories get across. I have the activities in the back. Um, the children learn how to pick out a page and they can, I ask them, what do you see? What do you hear? All of those kind of questions. And I'm using the skills that I, that I got from the museum and from my other facets of my life into putting it all together in the books. And now you asked me about my awards. I think to me, um, it's because of everybody I'm around the reason I've gotten the awards. I have a writer's group in which the people have taught me more than I can honestly say to you, John. And I'm sure you've had experiences like that. I, the museum for 20 some years, my Lord, I learned so much about children and about, and about paintings and about putting everything together. Um, I, it's about, it's, it's for, yes, I love having the awards. Please don't get me wrong. Uh, that kind of validates my books, I guess is, is what I'm trying to say, but more important, it, it, it is my, uh, memories someday for other people about hunting dogs and about the most fabulous man I ever married, my husband, uh, and all that he's taught me. So that's, you know, yes, I love having the awards, but it's not for me. I mean, it, it's, it's for the work that I do. I don't know how else to say it. That's fair that's enough. Good. That's fair enough. Um, so what's next? What's Any other books coming down the line, Linda? Oh, I have five other manuscripts already written and all. Um, oh, yes. Uh, the Curious Friendship of Patch and Barney, about Patch, the dog that you you know, and a skunk. Doc's daughter, yeah. Yes, Doc's daughter. And Rush was actually his son, by the way. Uh, they were in the same litter, Patch and Rush. But, yeah, uh, the skunk, Barney, uh, That th I think that's a cute one. Uh, another one is, oh, The Great Animal Escape. That's what Story Monsters is working on right now for me. And that is, uh, I love that book. It it has uh, a lot of characters in it about a cow and a bull and a, uh, a burrow and um, a raven, Bernie, which mm -hmm. kind of puts it all together, but it's their escape. And they're escaping because they don't want to have hamburgers made out of them. And so they learn about that. They learn it from a, <laughs> a, a, a raven that came from Mexico telling them who, who gossips a lot. And so they escape from their ranch. And, and it's their adventure on escaping from the ranch and where they end up. They, they end up at a retirement cow ranch where, where the owner doesn't destroy the cattle, the owner lets them live out their lives. And uh, we had read about some Spanish uh, owners of cattle that uh, they have a, they actually would hold on to those cattle and they didn't necessarily kill them. Not that, not that they didn't end up, you know, in hamburgers, but, but they really treated them different than, than some of the things that happen over here. So to be honest with you, that that I think I'm really looking forward to that one because oh. it's got a lot in it. Let's hope I get to see that one. Um, you know, you're you're um, you're a writing factory, really, aren't you? You just roll them off the press. Yes. <laughs> well, I I've got to do this. I'm in the uh, latter edition of my life, so to speak, and I want I've got a lot of stories to tell. Uh, I've got another one about the missing case of the pink piggy, and it's about two um, two of these German shepherd dogs and what happens when one of their little um, squeeze toys goes missing. 
and uh, I've got I've I've got enough I've got a one on prairie dogs and on uh, the prairie dogs and also eagles, and I think it's kind of cute. It's about the the grandpa eagle and the grandma prairie dog and how they teach their children the rules of the road. Oh, so, I love yeah. the prairie dogs. I love the prairie dogs. Oh, I dogs. do too. And they're very smart and they have lots of tunnels and they have a birthing tunnel. They have like a, they an area where they eat. Yes. Oh yeah. There's over 150 different species that actually use um, the, the tunnels. Like when the prairie dogs have left those particular tunnels, they become tunnels for other species. I mean, they're really, uh, they're very, they're smart animals. They're I a fundamental be- part of the, of the prairies. Yes. 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 So Linda, where can I people go, get, I'm, I'm no, no, no. Linda, where can people get your books from? Okay. Um, they can get it from the website, www.harkybooks.com. And in that website, it talks about uh, uh, myself. It talks about the books, each book and all the each the awards that each book has, has gotten. And in that website, you can either order them from the website itself or from Amazon or from, I've got two publishers, Archway Publishing, which was always, which was very good with my books too. And also my uh, new publishing company, the the Story Monsters Press. So, you know, you can, that's where you can get them. Excellent. Linda, it's been a huge pleasure to interview you for the third time. And I hope we'll be doing lots more. I've thoroughly enjoyed going over the books again. And also, you know, finding out now about Blake Jakes and the unusual day. It's been fascinating. And just to go over and look at uh, Mike Menick's fabulous illustrations, uh, they are simply amazing, everybody. Everybody, I think kids are just going to adore these books. They're going to love them. And yes, rock on, Zeke. That is all I have to say. <laughs> You're very sweet. Yes, I've enjoyed today. And yes, I want to do it again. So there. So Linda, thanks for joining me again. Linda Hawkey, everybody. Mm-hmm.